doing the gut content analysis of this because we're particularly interested in finding out exactly what this animal ate just before it died. We could get up to 20,000 squid beaks sitting inside that stomach. Sperm whales eat up to a thousand small squid every day. But a colossus nearly had this whale for lunch. You can actually see this is extraordinary. We've got eight scars running down here. Now a squid has got eight arms and two long tentacles. These gouges that we've got, the scar tissue in the height of this, have come from the colossal squid. And then we've got all of these gouges all the way down over the jaw. Now who knows what's been going on here, but you know, if this animal is eating 800 to 1,000 squid per day and they're all having a gouge and a scratch and a scrape like this, this is massive scar tissue all around the jaw of this animal. It's quite sensational. I think that'll probably do us. Those scars are made by the colossal squid's razor-sharp hooks. They're as long as the tiger's claws and can rotate 360 degrees. With weapons like this, nothing's too big to attack. They know no fear, absolutely no fear squid. Steve uses a smaller cousin of the colossal squid to reveal its bizarre anatomy. So what most people want to see are the beaks. They're really sharp and you can actually stick your finger right down through there. Quite unusual, the esophagus passes straight through the animal's brain. So you've got the two eyes, the head, beaks, the mantle, all the guts inside and the two great big muscular fins. This thing will just hover in the water column and when it sees something that it wants to eat, it'll just flap those fins and go straight into the prey. This obviously isn't a colossal squid, but is it similar to a colossal squid at least? It's as close as you can get to a colossal as possible, okay? I wouldn't be at all surprised if this was taking fish for food that were about the same size as the animal. Really? Yeah. We're creating two virtual contenders. But to equip them for battle, we need to give them the fighting skills of the real animals. First, the colossal squid. How does it attack? And how does it defend itself against the sperm whale? For the answer, we'll build and test a mechanical squid. But how do you recreate a creature never seen alive? Talk to the man who knows them best. Steve, what's the, uh, the squid's main weapons? It's endowed with them, okay? It's got stealth, it's got invisibility, it's got these seriously nasty hooks on the tentacles and on the arms. It's got these enormous eyes that it can see, you know, penetrate into the water hundreds and hundreds of meters. So this sperm whale, this great big clumsy thing, it's just gonna barrel itself through the water like that. The squid's gonna see it and it's just gonna, you know, minutes warning, it's just gonna get out of the way. We'll base our biomechanical model on the world's most complete specimen of a colossal squid. Chris Wheatley, Justin Buckingham, and Mike Latham form the design and construction team. We've got similar animals which grow to about this sort of size that we can scale up. And of course we had the one a year or so ago now, that great big thing. Well, I think that we can scale a model based on that one specimen. I think I'd rather swim with whales than I would with colossal yeah. squid. Are you sure we want to do this, Jeff? Oh, that sounds fun. Sounds good, though. It's a real game of cat and mouse down there, I tell you. It sounds very rubbery. <laughs> We've got some great water making, some great mechanics to do this. On a very large scale. So, yeah, yeah cool. First, our team builds a maquette, a scale model to help get the squid's proportions exactly right. Okay, so this is actually attached to the head, and it's bulbous. It'll be flattened dorsally and ventrally, so it'll kind of like go in a W. So you've got two enormous eyes either side of. Once Steve okays the maquette, our sculptors can start on a full-size version. They scale up each slice in plywood to create a framework. Now the real work of building the squid can begin.
In our battle between Colossal Squid and Sperm Whale, the squid will make the first move, using an unrivaled tactic to confuse its enemy. Now you see that squid now, you see the way that it's attacked that prey and all of a sudden, just instantly like that, it's going pulse, 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 pulse. I don't know how they do it, okay? But that is what the Colossal Squid would do. Coming up, the ultimate vanishing act. The Colossal Squid's lair, a mile deep. Pitch black water. Then suddenly, a sneak attack. It'll be sitting there in the water column, completely transparent, maybe attack a prey and all of a sudden go into this fantastic fireworks display. Pulse, 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 or completely red, just bang, just like that. It's faster than that, it's incredible stuff. It almost looks like a, like a straw blade even, I mean, it looks artificial. Can you imagine that on a colossal scale? It yeah. would be fantastic. The ones that we've got in tanks right now are still capable of going completely transparent to brick red. Hmm. So it might be, a, you know, an attribute or a characteristic of the larger squid, I don't really know, because nobody's really been able to grow these things up to check it out. So what can we discover about how the colossal squid uses camouflage? Our quest begins off California with another master of disguise, the humble squid. Part of the giant squid family, it can grow to 14 feet. The Humboldt uses a pearly white color to blend into the gloom and a fluorescent strobe to confuse its prey. Even in the squid world, red means danger. Other relatives of the colossal squid show how this magical color change works. Squid are cephalopods, giant snails that have developed tentacles. So are cuttlefish and octopus. Cephalopods are the most intelligent of the invertebrates. They can change their skin pattern instantly to match their surroundings a skill unequaled in nature. Australia's deadly blue-ringed octopus shows how it's done. Its skin is covered with small pockets that contain pigments and crystals. When the octopus squeezes these pockets, it's like hitting a switch. The pigments and crystals darken or start to glow. When the octopus relaxes the pressure, the color vanishes. Squid use the same technique. Scientists have counted 40 camouflage patterns. And squid can change them in less than a second. Reef squid have colored their backs to match the seabed and their underbellies to match the light from above. Shielding against danger from above and below. In a world where they meet a predator every 10 minutes, this trick